Hello, today we're going to be talking about density. Um, here's the definition for density. Density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. And mathematically, therefore, it can be expressed like this. Where density, which is usually given the symbol um, rho, Greek letter rho, okay, that's that one there, is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So mass is measured in kilograms and volume is measured in cubic meters and therefore density is measured in kilograms per cubic meter. A common um, unit that you might see for density is grams per cubic centimeter, but the SI unit is kilograms per cubic meter, so that's the one we're going to stick with today. Okay. Um, you can do all sorts of fun things with density. Here is what I call a density tower, which is lots of different liquids all floating on top of each other. And the reason they all float on top of the one below is because the one above has a lower density than the one below. And therefore it will float on something of, um, of a higher density. You can, this also happens with solids, not just with liquids. Solids which are less dense than the liquid they're floating in will stay above the, that liquid. Um, and so on. Okay, right. So let's get into it a little bit more. Um, it's quite easy to make mistakes because we've got compound units, we've got cubic units for the volume and it's, it's quite easy to, to mess those up um, if you're not careful, you're not sure what you're looking for. So it's important to point out that one cubic meter is not equal to 100 cubic centimeters, even though one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. The unit conversions don't work like that and going the other way here from millimeters to meters if the unit is cubed, so you've got one millimeter cubed, that's not the same as 0.001 meter cubed. I, the conversion factor of a, of a thousand there doesn't work. And the reason for that is, uh, can be explained with this cube. Here is a cube, um, each side is one meter, so it's quite a big cube. Um, and if you work out the volume of that cube in meters cubed, you get one meter cubed because it's one times one times one. But if you measure these sides in centimeters, same cube, all right, you get 100 centimetres on each side. 100 centimetres, 100 centimetres, 100, whoops, 100 centimetres. Now, when you work out the volume in centimetres, it's actually 100 times 100 times 100. So you actually end up with 10 to the 6, 100 times 100 times 100 cubic centimetres. And you can see that the conversion factor there is very different and the conversion factor for just centimeters. So meters cubed to centimeters cubed is effectively 100 cubed, that's the conversion factor. Now the easiest way to remember this um, is to look at how we actually write the unit. So let's say we've got something which is 24 cubic centimeters, all right? And we want to express it in cubic meters. The best way to do it is to say that this is 24 times 10 to the minus 2 because the conversion factor for centimeters is 10 to the minus 2 meters but it's the whole thing the centi and the meters that's cubed so you effectively end up with 24 times 10 to the minus 2 times meters or cubed and then you just expand the brackets out and that will give you the right um, conversion factor so then you end up with 24 times 10 to the minus two cubed, which is minus six, and then meters cubed on the end. All right, so that's the best way, that's the easiest way I've ever found to explain that one, um, to exchange the prefix, the centi or the milli or whatever it is, for its power of 10, right? So centi is 10 to the minus two. Remember that it's cubed, um, and then just expand out the bracket, and you'll, you'll, you'll get it right that time, okay? So whichever way you're going, whether it's to a large unit or a smaller unit, that's probably the best way to do it. So obviously, because milli is 10 to the minus 3, you're going to get 10 to the minus 3 cubed. All right, so that's going to turn into a, um, a conversion factor of 10 to the minus 9 meters cubed. All right, so 1 millimeter cubed is going to be 10 to the minus 9 meters cubed. Okay, so that's, um, that's something to look out for. Right, let's do a few worked examples with density. Um, here's a nice one that I like to, to try and work out because it's a surprisingly large answer sometimes. So what we're going to do is estimate how much air, in terms of the mass of the air, is um, in the room. Um, it gives us the density of air and we want to work out the mass. So obviously what we need is, is the volume. So the room I'm sitting in um, at the moment 
has a floor area of I would say about three meters uh, by five meters and the ceiling is probably three meters high. Okay so this is a cuboid this room pretty much um, and so the volume of the room is just going to be those three numbers multiplied together because that's how you work out the volume of any cuboid. So 3 times 5 is 15 and 15 times 3 is 45. So I'm sitting in a room of approximately 45 cubic meters of air in it. So we want to work out the mass of that air. Well density is mass divided by volume. Um, so the mass is going to be the density of the air, which remember is given the symbol rho, multiplied by the volume of air in the room. Um, the density is 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter multiplied by the volume in cubic meters which is 45 um, and that gives us a mass of air of 58.5 kilograms which is a surprisingly large answer that's um, you know th nearly three quarters of, of my mass so there's a surprising amount of air um, in the room so that's a basic one where we're looking at uh, the volume uh, being a cuboid and here's another one where we're looking at the, vo the volume of a sphere okay so this is another one that you you might have to calculate uh, so it's quite handy to remember the volume of a sphere even though it's in your data book um, it's one that you can hopefully easily remember so we want to find the density of the earth on average obviously the earth has layers of different density um, so all we can do with this information is work out the average density Right, so the density is the mass over the volume. So the volume of a sphere, if you remember from GCSE maths, is four thirds pi. Oops, this pen is getting worse, I think. It's joining up um, lines that I really don't want to be joined up. Okay, let's try that again. Four thirds times pi times the cube of the radius. Four thirds pi r cubed, that's what we're going to do. All right, so that's the volume. Um, so four thirds pi, and there it goes again, that's a pi there, we'll just get, accept that for now, times the radius cube. Now the radius is in kilometers, all right, 6,400 kilometers. Now we need that in meters cubed, so we need to convert that to meters, so 6,400, and then the conversion factor to meters, which is 10 to the 3, all right, so 6,400 times 10 to the 3, we'll just leave it like that for now, cubed. All right, so when you work all that out, you end up with a volume of 1.1, this is two, two significant figures, sorry about this. Um, you end up with a volume of 1.1 times 10 to the 21 cubic meters. All right, so that's the volume of the Earth. Um, and then obviously you just put that into the density equation, so density is mass over volume. Mass of the Earth given in the question, 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and then divide that by the volume that we've just worked out divided by 1.1 times 10 to the 21 cubic meters and that gives you a density of approximately 5,500 um, kilograms per cubic meter. All right so that's another typical example using um, density to work out the using um, the volume of a sphere in this case to work out the density of a spherical object. Okay, so those are two fairly basic examples. Um, what the example would like to do in the harder questions on density is embed the concept of density inside a, a harder question. Now usually um, it's phrased something like this, um, and this is very similar to past paper questions that we've had in the past at A-level. So we've got air flowing past the blades of a wind turbine at a speed. So it gives you the speed of the air in meters per second and the radius of the blades and the density of the air, right, in kilograms per cubic meter. Now it's not obvious where you, sometimes, where you're supposed to start on this question. So a good starting point would be to write down the equation for density. So density rho is equal to mass divided by volume. Um, now it wants the mass uh, so the tricky bit is to work out the volume from this data here. Um, the get out clause is that this question is about rates. So it wants the mass flow per second, um, which is a rate. So it wants how quickly the mass is flowing past the blades. Now up here, if we look back up here at the speed, we've got um, another rate because velocity is a rate. 
it's the rate of change of displacement. So this is effectively how far the air is flowing per second. So that's how we can get the volume. All right, so what we want is to say that here's a circle, um, which is the area. The area of the circle is the area that the blades sweep out. All right, so there's a four meter blade length. All right, so the radius of the circle is going to be four meters. Um, and the air is effectively flowing, let's say from right to left, this way through that circle, through the blades, across the blades. So it's going to sweep out, oops, a bit wonky, but that should be a cylinder. It's going to sweep out a cylinder as the air flows in this direction. Now the velocity of that air is 10 meters per second. So in one second, this length drawn out by the air is going to be 10 meters. So that's our volume. All right, so if we look at the volume of a cylinder, the volume is the area of the circle at the end, which is pi r squared, like that, multiplied by the length of the cylinder, L. Sometimes it's given as H, but because I've drawn it horizontally here, I'm gonna call it L. Um, that length in one second is 10 meters. So if we calculate that, then the volume of air flowing per second is going to be pi times r squared, well r is 4, so that's 16, and that's 10, so 16 times 10 times pi is 160 pi, which just leave it like that for a minute. All right, so the volume of air is going to be 160 pi meters cubed. And when you work that one out, you get 503 cubic meters. So 503 cubic meters per second is flowing through the blades. Now it tells us the density and asks us to work out the mass per second. Now I haven't done any meters cubed per second here because actually they're all going to cancel out. Technically I should have put per second there but I, I've left that out because it's, it's going to cancel with the kilograms per second. So the mass flowing through there per second is going to be uh, the density of the air multiplied by the volume that we've just worked out, which is 1.29 times 503. And when you calculate that, you end up with 648 kilograms. Okay, so 648 kilograms flow through the turbine per second. All right, and that's how you do that. And that's quite a tricky question um, to answer, but um, not completely undoable, I think. Okay. That's it on density. Thank you very much.